Hello, medical terminology class. My name is Michelle, and I did my final project on nephrolithesis. Nephrolithesis is the medical term for a kidney calculi, or more commonly called kidney stones. Stones are crystal deposits that form in the kidneys, and they occur due to an unbalance of water and salts and minerals. Often a stone will pass through the urinary tract by itself, although this can be painful, but sometimes stones will need a medical intervention of some kind. Related to nephrolithesis is urolithesis, which just means that a stone has moved from the kidney to somewhere else in the urinary tract, but it's still the same stone. At the bottom of the screen, you see a box that says applicable terminology. I've added various medical terminology that apply to my topic, but I will only draw attention to a few of these terms, such as nephro, which refers to kidney, and lith, which refers to stone. The urinary system is responsible for excreting waste and maintaining homeostasis of body fluids and blood pressure within the body. The anatomy, as you can see on the right-hand side, involves two kidneys, two ureters, one bladder and one urethra, and a stone will start in the kidneys will travel through the rest of the urinary system in order to exit the body. There are four main types of kidney stones, which include calcium stones, which are the most common. They're made of calcium oxalate, which are naturally found in foods. Struvite stones, which form in response to some infections, such as a urinary tract infection. Uric acid stones, which occur when the urine is too acidic, and that happens when someone doesn't drink enough water or eats a high protein diet. Lastly, are cysteine stones, which is a hereditary disorder. They're very rare, and it occurs when kidneys excrete too much of the amino acid cysteine. While a stone is still in the kidney, it's usually not painful, but a stone can start to cause pain when it travels from the kidney to the urethra. This, of course, depends on the size and the composition of the stone. Pain can be felt all over the abdominal cavity, sides, mid-back, or groin. It can cause such things as dysuria, which is difficulty when urinating, polic urea, which is frequent urination, olguria, decreased amount of urine, or hematuria, which is blood that's in the urine. It can also cause nausea, emesis, hydrosis, and pyretic condition. This refers to vomiting, sweating, or can cause a fever. In order to diagnose nephrolithesis, a doctor can use a CT scan, x-ray, ultrasound, as well as urinalysis and blood tests to test for high levels of minerals, calcium, and other salts. A patient's diet history, uh, water consumption, and family history will be taken into account. And there are some medical conditions that will raise the risk of kidney stones. This includes blood pressure, gout, urinary tract infections, high doses of vitamin D, intestinal bypass surgery, and many metabolic disorders. If a stone is smaller than 5 millimeters, there's a 90% chance that it will pass without medical intervention. A stone that's between 5 and 10 millimeters has a 50% chance of passing without intervention, but any other larger stones will definitely need medical intervention. The best treatment and prevention for nephrolithesis is water to maintain hydration. For those who are prone to kidney stones, they should drink at least 10 glasses of water per day. For those who have had a kidney stone, a doctor may want to perform a kidney stone chemical analysis to determine what the stone is made of and then avoid those items. For all stones, the doctor will suggest consuming less sodium. But for calcium oxalate stones, the doctor will suggest eating fewer oxalate-rich foods, such as potato chips, chocolate, and green vegetables. For struvite stones, the doctor will want to treat the underlying infection, such as mentioned before, a urinary tract infection. There are prescription medications that can help pass the kidney stones, such as alpha blockers that will relax the walls of the ureter so a stone can pass on its own. And there's other medications that can help prevent the formation of new stones. For larger stones, surgery may be necessary. Shockwave therapy is intended for stones located still within the kidney. An extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy uses shockwaves to break apart or crush a stone into fragments. Those fragments can then pass through the urinary tract on their own. 
Ureteroscopy is intended for stones located close to the bladder so that a surgeon can insert a tube through the opening of the urinary tract, which means no incisions and no cuts are made in the body, and the surgeon can break up the stone and remove the stone fragments bit by bit. This concludes my project on nephrolithesis. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested, below are my references I used.